All right, how you guys doing? Mm -hmm. Just getting set up here. All right. I think we're good to go. Hey, what's up, Elemental? Um, if you could let me know if the sound if, is is the sound good, looks like it is. Should be. Okay, we're trying a new uh, chat app today, so you'll see it up above me, <laughs> up above me, right there. <laughs> and because Restream just barely updated their chat, so. Okay, thanks. All right, and I didn't advertise today, so we might not have as big of a crowd, <laughs> but we'll see. What's up, me? It, it is indeed. Okay, today, um, I was thinking about either posing this guy or I need to do, I need to, I need to model up an Einstein head for something I'm working on. And I was gonna do it with fiber mesh. <laughs> hey, what's up? While, while Twitch sorts itself, okay. <laughs> All right, interesting. So yeah, I was thinking about just diving right into that uh, Einstein head so I can actually get it done today. So, yep, you guys wanna, hey, what's up, Steve? All right, let's see. So this is what I did last week. Um, I was thinking about posing it, but I'm only, I only have to pose the hands and it would take me, it wouldn't take me very long. And if I did that, it would kind of get in the way of um, doing an Einstein head. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, put put this off like the posing of this guy late till later and then uh, We're gonna do yeah, I'm gonna do an Einstein really quick. Not really quick for this stream. I'll do an Einstein for this stream Okay, there we go uh, All right. Hold on let me just post this over on my Facebook really quick. Share that. And then over on my, my 3D character workshop page. Yep, gonna do a new head. Here we go. Just gotta post my, post my social, social stuffs. Okay, there we go for friends over on Facebook and whatnot. All right, all right. We got it going, okay. So this is gonna be, this Einstein head is just gonna be me looking off screen at a bunch of different references. I don't have any one concept artist in mind. I'm just going to be, um, just I'm just gonna kinda go from the, go off the cuff and just go for it. And it just concept in 3D, I guess based on a whole bunch of different ones. I've done I've done something similar before, um, and it's kind of fun. Uh, so I was thinking about doing it again. <laughs> and I, I want to do some fiber mesh stuff because I haven't done fiber mesh for a long time. Einstein's hair is just nuts, and I think it'd be fun to do with fiber mesh, so. So let's get to it, my friends. All right. So I'm just gonna do, just like I, I do, uh, Every time I, I start one of these new characters, I just start with a sphere and then just start adding adding shapes. So this is uh, this is the cranium and I want to I'm kind of looking at this guy's a little too realistic, but um, let me see if I can open this in a new tab and pull it down here so you can see. Um, this one, although I'm not a huge fan of it, I like how the head shape is really tall and then the face is kind of pulled out like this with a really small chin just kind of peeking out from underneath. Um, so I think I'm, I'm, this, this is the one I'm probably going to look at the most, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right. So I do want to have his head tall, tall head. 
and then his uh, his jowls kind of wide. What's up, Chris? Hey, Yuri, from Belgium. How's it going? Oh, no worries, Indy. Okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah, you were asking me like how I how I made the different shapes on the interior. Um, I and yeah, I just used the inflate brush on alt, so it actually deflated in there. It's really hard when it's um, very close to the the symmetry line, like right in the middle, because the move brush no longer works when you get that close. So inflate works when you get close. Okay, yeah, Einstein has an interesting, interesting shape. This reminds me of those monkey heads, you know, those <laughs> with the, with the kind of shape there. All right, where did this go? All right. Yeah, this is gonna be. This will be fun. Ein you know, I've, <laughs> I found that Einstein and Mark Twain aren't aren't that different <laughs> in what they look like. They both have the, the crazy hair and the big old mustache and um, there's some underlying facial features that, uh, that, that are definitely different. But for the most part, they're kind of similar in a way. I'm just gonna get this little chin and I wanna really squish his jowls, his face. And he's got a really big nose. Really big nose. Hey, Massey, how's it going? I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Macy or Massey? How are you? What are you saying, Neil? Are you not dividing at one time today? What are you talking? Oh, the, the, the base sphere? No, because I'm gonna end up Z remeshing it anyway. So I'm just going to leave it. I'll leave it. All right. I'm liking this new chat app, you guys. Here, this is what it looks like for me. It looks like this. So I can see what you guys are saying, and then it says three out of three connected, and I can see how many viewers across all three platforms are happening right here. So that's, that's working out pretty well. I like kind of how it flips up in the in the chat app. I can probably make this a little bigger. Eh. I want to make it wider so it's not so crunched in there. So it looks more like this, you know? See how it's skinnier? But I don't know if I can do it. Let's see, width. Let's go 500. 500, Alex. I might have just killed the chat app. I don't know. Maybe you guys have to say something for it to pop up. <laughs> anyway, hopefully it doesn't get in the way. Okay. Let's turn on dynamic subdivisions. And I'm just going to make, like I said, I'm going to make his head kind of squarish. And we'll just keep continuing to edit as we go. something there it is now it's wider and thinner but it takes up more real estate so we'll see it's probably uh i don't know might be a little too too much here um let me see one more thing i want to try message opacity okay let's see if i can if that changes anything i don't know <laughs> all right we'll see Sorry, I don't understand uh, that language on YouTube. This is English, so I can't really understand that. I'm sorry. Okay. So, let's see. Let's get his nose, his giant nose in here. Now, his eyes are a little...
Let's get this into place. Around like this. Whoa, I don't want to rotate it. Russian? Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, brothers. You know, you know that language, huh? <laughs> Hello. I don't know what happened with my... Now I have something in the way. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> I have this little guy, see this little creature guy in the way. I can't see what you guys are saying until it clears that guy. <laughs> Gosh dang it. Come on, restream. All right, so I have to like look at the chat up there. All right, growing pains, growing pains. New chat app. Okay. Yep, we're gonna do some Einstein today. No particular concept artist. I'm just, uh, I, I need it for something that I'm working on on the side. So, um, just a personal thing. So I was gonna just make it, do two, two birds with one stone and just make it uh, while I stream. And I really wanted to play with some fiber mesh, so that'll be fun. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, get out of the way, squid dude. I think it's just because I was messing with it so much. Trying to get, I was trying to reduce the opacity on the chat over in ZBrush, but I think I have to do that with my streaming app instead of the chat app so I'll mess with that at another time I'm afraid I'll screw it something up you know <laughs> all right Yuri do what you want man <laughs> it'd be fun let's get him some ears I think I want his head even squished even more on the sides. Taller. Before I do these ears, I'm not, his ears are kind of, they're big, but they're tucked under his hair. So we'll just get him in there just to have him as a as placement and then we'll figure it out later. It's flipping all over the place, come on. <laughs> hey dude I'm doing great thanks <laughs> okay let's push this in just to start getting a little cup happening there you guys have been doing uh, I've been doing a weekly live stream for my students, which is, uh, it's been going quite well. So it's, um, it's nice because I can show some of the stuff that I can't normally show on this stream, like some Disney infinity characters and things like that, which is pretty cool. And I've been doing, uh, the weekly Q and A's been going pretty good. Uh, have you updated your process pipeline recently? Um, not recently when it comes to sculpting characters. I, I did update the process as far as, uh, I don't really use Dynamesh anymore. I use, um, Remesh by Union and the Z Remesher. And you'll see me do that here. Uh, how many times do I do live per week? I do one public live stream, which is this one, so everybody can watch. And then I do two student-only ones. So, because I do, I teach an online course called 3D Character Workshop. It's an online workshop. So I do two more streams, one on Wednesday and one on Friday. Oh, thanks me. <laughs> 
Hey Paul, I'm I'm squinting. Yeah, I'm I'm squinting because I'm trying to read the chat because the chat's being weird. It has a has a cute squid in front of my chat, so I can't read the latest three chats. <laughs> oh no! Here, look at this. See, you can see. Get out of the way, squid. Hooray! The chat is ready for new messages. That's great. Get out of my way now. <laughs> All right. Let's get a neck on this guy. He needs a neck. Everybody needs a neck. Okay. I have to restart it? Yeah, you're probably right. I just... I don't dare. I don't dare because I don't want to break anything, you know? Have you messed with the new chat app? Okay. Then his, his mouth is going to be covered by a mustache, but I still want to put it in there. So I'm just going to pull in a mouth. Let's see, how much resolution do I have? Um, I'm going to do it with a Z modeler, I think, this time. Polygroup it. No, polygroup, single poly. Let's give him a mouth about, mm, maybe like that. Extrude, polygroup all. Push that in. Remesh by union? Yep, I'll show you in a second here. Okay, I'm going to push that in even uh, another step further there. Come on, go in. Whoop. One more. Whoop. That's good. Okay, then what I can do is just start to close this. I turn topological off so I can, and then I turn my range to three so I don't accidentally grab the upper lip or the lower lip, depending on which one I'm messing with. And then I can just kind of move this scooch. Scooch is a word, right? Scooch these together and then pull them back so it looks like it's wrapping around teeth. Got to be careful not to go too, too far. And then I'm going to uh, just kind of inflate this closed. I don't want to close it all the way yet because I want to Z remesh it. Because this is really what I'm working with here. Hold on a second. If I turn off dynamic subdivisions, that's really what the mesh looks like without it being subdivided. I kind of want to get it to curve around the mouth right here. Some kind of a curve for Z remesher to follow. Or, yeah. Okay. So now that we're to this point, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I am going to add a real subdivision level, maybe two. Then delete those. Delete lower. Okay, so now we have this. Now I'm going to Z remesh it, so the um, remesh by union will work better. Not tessimate, Z remesher. Uh, let's try three. Oh yeah, yep, no problem. Is it has it been that long since you've watched me live? Because I haven't streamed on Sunday nights for quite a, quite a while. This has been my time for a, for a while, but thanks for thanks for hanging out. Thanks for joining me. Let's see. So I'm gonna go and see now that I have more uh, resolution to work with. I can come in here and now now I can close his mouth. I'm gonna give him kind of a. 
Yeah, I'm out like this. And we'll just kind of smooth this out. I need to turn my intensity down on my smooth brush. Okay. I can turn dynamic back on. This is what he's looking like now. I can inflate these corners closed. It's always fun to see a mouth come together. <laughs> Do I have any advice for selling 3D models for 3D print, mainly miniatures? Is it better to sell them already 3D printed or just 3D model ready for 3D print? So the difference is um, if you're going to sell something that's digital, that means somebody could steal it. So they could like just grab your digital file and, you know, share it with everybody they run into. Um, the, what was I going to say? So, but if you're, at, if, if you're selling a physical model, then the, it, then it's becomes a pain on the other side. So you have to do shipping and manufacturing and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's kind of, uh, yeah, it just depends. The, the digital one is a little more viable for a business, I guess, if you don't want to, all the headache of shipping everything and because shipping can be expensive, um, then you, yeah, it's just, that's kind of what you have to deal with. I, I personally haven't done either myself. I've only worked for companies that sold the, the, the toys or the collectibles. So I haven't, I haven't tried it myself, but just uh, hearing what other people have to say about it, that's kind of what, you know, what their experience has been. I hope that helps. Indy, how come you're a sad face? Did I miss your question? <laughs> Chat's being weird today, so if I miss your question, just type it again and I'll try and catch it. He's got a weird chin, so. I wanna, I wanna have him have a really small chin with a giant mustache. And then I am going to do smile lines on him. I usually don't, but he's like older guy. So um, smile lines help age someone up. You're a sad face because I cannot get the hang of the inflate brush. I, I end up with a lot of warbles. Oh, um, the... You're talking about across the mouth? So the, the key there is subtlety. If you just want to just lightly, lightly brush over it and, and just kind of watch, watch as it goes together and use a, a larger brush than, the, than you think you need, a larger brush size. And at a very, if you're, if you're getting it too quick, just turn down the intensity. Make sure it's a five or less or something like that. Just keep it really really light. <laughs> that beaver's going to be the death of you. Hey, what's up, Tenshi? Okay. Let's get the eyes on here. This is going quicker than I thought it would. It's gonna take a lot of uh, a lot of fendingling, I think. This guy. That's a word, right? Fendingling. Oh, come on, Gizmo. Let's separate this out. Split unmasked points down arrow and then turn on transparency so I can see what they're doing inside the head these eyeballs okay whoops move hey we're not having too bad of a viewer 
viewer ratio today. Thanks guys for hanging out with me. You're not bound to a concept drawing, not today. So today I'm using off-screen references. Um, I'm modeling Einstein for a project that I'm doing. It's a personal project. And I just have kind of uh, several different, just a mixture of like real photos and stuff off to the side. Just kind of, So I kind of have an idea of uh, what he looks like. And I'm just kind of doing a caricature of him. It's kind of fun. Maybe bigger eyes. Okay, I think that'll work. And this is the kind of stuff that you would do, say, if somebody came to you and said, could you model, can you model this person? Can you model, you know, can you do a caricature of, of somebody I know or some, some celebrity famous? It's like a, it's like doing a caricature at a fair, you know, something like that. Um, but in 3D. So that's kind of, that's kind of what I'm going for. Okay, just kind of making these eye, the eye socket shapes around these eyes right here. Okay, let's, um, I think I'm ready to combine this together. Let's duplicate it. Duplicate, hide the original, and then this is where, uh, dude, this is where the magic that I was saying comes in. So you kind of, you have to have the gizmo at the home, home base. So hold down alt and send it home. Then click on this circular arrow to reset it. Uh, where is the smooth stronger brush again? Oh, it's right. Um, it's if you, if you hit the uh, comma key and you go under brushes right here, brush, and then there's a folder called smooth. Just double click on that and it's right there, smooth stronger. See that guy? Yep, right there. What's the hotkey? It doesn't have, there's no hotkey for it unless you set it, Chris. It's just right here. It's just uh, activate transparency. So it's just on my UI. I don't have a hotkey for it. Okay. So now I just go into the gear and just hit remesh by union and it'll just stitch that sucker together just like that. And I probably jumped the gun as far as closing his mouth because I'm not going to get these nice edge loops now. That's okay. Maybe I'll pull it back apart. So let's hit accept and it turns off symmetry. So you want to turn that back on and it did stitch his lips together this time. I don't want that either. So I'm going to roll back. And I, I did it too early. So let's, I'm smoothing his, his mouth back apart and I'm gonna pull it back apart. And then I'll put it back together after we stitch. Cause I, I do want the Ziri mesh loops to go around the mouth and it won't if it's closed. Okay. Temporary. Temporary. Okay, here we go. Let's do it again. Stitch. There we go. Now it's not stitched. Um, accept it. Okay, and then let's Z remesh it again. Let's see what we get. It's always a grab bag. I'm going to go up to four this time. Z remesh that. I am a hotkey. <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't turn on symmetry. Come on. You know, I'm gonna try. Uh, I'm gonna try using uh, remesh by Z remesher instead. Pull this over. Go up to about four thousand ish. There we go. It's not bad. Okay. 
Accept that. Turn on symmetry again. Didn't forget. Hey, what's up, Jared? Hey, Mawson, how's it going? Yeah, that symmetry gets me every time, Neil. Every time. Okay, so now let's let's close that mouth back again. Looks like we got a little weirdness underneath that nose happening. A little pull. Um, so let's, I'm going to roll back actually to here and I'm going to do the, the Z reme remesh by Z remesher again and I'm going to see if I can avoid getting that pull under the nose. I'm going to have to do it twice. So if I accept this and then I do it again, sometimes uh, remeshing a remeshed mesh, say that five times fast. Uh, we'll we'll uh, fix your fix your problems. There we go. So I just pulled that cone out just a little bit more, and that fixed that weird pull under the nose. Okay, that'll work. Except there we go. Turn on symmetry. Hey, what's up, Saturday? Oh, it was Spotlight Project that got you today? Yeah, it's always something. Always something. <laughs> What's up, Danny? Okay, let's see what we have now. Let's, we can just start um, smoothing and arranging and changing his eye shape and adding some stuff. I'm actually going to do some Sculptress Pro on this guy, I think, because he's got some, uh, he's got a lot of detail because he's an old, old guy, so he's got wrinkles, wrinkles happening. Okay, I'm just, I'm just kind of going back and forth, top, bottom, top, bottom, closing this mouth back up, using Inflate. Making his Muppet mouth. Smoothing out that. When you do the Z remesher, sometimes it will put it'll put a line down the center across the symmetry. See that? See that line? That bump right there. So I just run smooth across there and smooth it out. I usually smooth out the head to neck transition, and then his jaw is going back quite far. So I'm gonna nudge that forward and pull his ear back in space. It's a little too far forward. There we go. And then smooth out the transition of the ear into the head. A little more. Anyone know where I can find a complete tutorial where all of those new transformation modifiers? I'm making one right now that's going to be part of my course, but I'm not done with it yet. But it's essentially the same. It's not really... It's, it's doing what you normally do, other than the remesh by union. It's the same as like... Like the Z remesh is pretty much the same as the Z remesher over in the tool palette. Um, it's just... It allows you to um, adjust the density on the fly with that white cone instead of guessing over with the, the numbers over there. Okay. Okay, let's, um, let's Sculptress Pro mode this guy. Give him some lips. And let's go to town on the wrinkles. I hardly ever do this. I ha yeah, this is rare. This is a rare. I'm doing two things today that I hardly ever do. I'm doing Sculptress Pro, which I don't, I, I, I don't do very much, not very often. And then I'm doing uh, Fiber Mesh, which I also don't do very often. So there you go. Um, I'm turning Dynamic off. And then I'm going to subdivide it once. So we have a better start, and that might be too much. Ah, uh, no, that's pretty good. That's a good place to start with uh, Sculptus Pro. 
So we'll just turn it on right there and just start going to town with it. And I don't recommend doing this unless you absolutely need to uh, because you should stay in your lowest resolution as long as possible. But um, since this is an old wrinkly feller, I decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it anyway. It'll be fun. This is really, and the reason why is because this is where you really start introducing the warbles. And then you just have to fight it, you know? Constantly going back and forth to fight it. Yep, Pro can get you out of a jam. Because <laughs> it does new mesh. Yep, it generates new mesh. You're, you're, you're kind of... Um, you're, yeah, you're kind of just... Uh, it, it allows you for some freedom, but it also allows... Or, or it makes a lot of... Uh, you're, you're no longer in a smooth, low mesh. So you're going to have to either retopologize it or Z-remesh it at some point. You know. Um... Let's see. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Vinit, I'm using off-screen ref today. That's a whole bunch of different... There's no one concept art person. I'm just kind of using live images. And this is this is supposed to be Einstein. It'll t hopefully turn out to be Einstein when I'm done. Somebody asked about rigging. I haven't rigged for a long time, but when I rig, I usually do it in, th in uh, Maya. Just the... With bones and stuff. I haven't done it for a while. If your draw is really small, yeah, you can get into trouble. Just like, yeah, like Paul said, you can get into trouble. Because if you have your brush really small, it adds a lot of, a lot of triangles really quickly. So I actually use my smooth brush and smooth it back down. And this is what it's actually looking like underneath the surface. And the amount of triangles that it puts in there is dependent on your brush size. So if you go really big, like this, it's going to put big triangles. And if you go really small, it's going to put a whole bunch of really small, tight, lots of detail triangles. And you got you got to kind of pay attention to the transitions between triangle densities, you know? Because it'll make some weird things across. Um, yeah, Saturday, I usually do use ref references, a concept, piece of a concept art. So if you watch any of my older streams, you'll, you'll most likely see that I have a reference up on my screen right here. I'm just, just today I'm not I'm doing it differently today. And a pinch, the pinch brush is a wonderful thing. All of these brushes that I'm using are available over on my website, uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I give them away for free for signing up for my newsletter. I guess that's not free. I don't know. Whatever you want to... In exchange for signing up for my newsletter, I give you my free brushes. And speaking of which, I'm going to be starting up uh, kind of a weekly, uh, an actual newsletter with some tips and tricks in it. And kind of a, I'm gonna do a, a student of the week. I'll try some different things, we'll see how it goes. How about the carve brush? So uh, the carve brush got replaced with the chisel brush. See this chisel brush right here? Because this chisel brush is so much better. Because it uses, see all these different profiles you get? And if you store a morph target, it'll actually do, it'll behave better than the, chis than the old carved brush that I used to use. So if you're wondering, that's what happened to it. Let's see. Hey Chris, I, I usually don't, uh, I don't like to say how much it costs here because the, the price might change and this 
videos getting archived and you know if the price changes and they say but on the video you said it was this much and now it's this much what's going on so um, all I like to say is that it's comparable to other online workshops like mine so it's not it's not a gum road it's a full-on uh, workshop with a community and student challenges and all sorts of stuff and we're just finishing up a student challenge. It's finishing up on January 31st, um, where uh, the students are modeling creature box concepts. And uh, the creature box guys themselves, Greg and Dave, are going to be the, the judges. So I'm super excited about that. It's a great opportunity for the students. Thanks, Danny. Wow, thanks you guys, Jeez, I appreciate it. Appreciate the kudos. Okay, I wanna give him, I wanna give him some crow's feet. I usually don't uh, start cutting into the details this soon, just so you know, this is way too early. But since it's during a live stream and I'm just kinda getting into it quickly, trying to get it done quickly. I'm adding details sooner than I normally would. Let me see here. Um, Paul, I'm going to I'm, I'm trying to put something together. Actually, this Einstein is, is part of it. It's going to be for one of the slides, but um, I'm working on something right now that will allow me to, to, uh, to keep it open all the time, kind of. It's, 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 it's hard to under explain, but um, if, you get, if you just sign up for my newsletter, you'll be notified when it becomes open again, hopefully very, very soon. I just turned off Sculptures Pro for a minute because I don't want it to actually add any more geometry while I'm using Inflate. Because I'm using, typically with Inflate, I'll use a bigger brush and I don't want it to reduce the density when I'm using the Inflate. I just want to, I just want it to inflate. Mm -hmm. So, if that makes sense. Uh, can you join or am you, are you late? Uh, yeah, the, it's, it's finishing up in like two days. So I, I have a student contest or challenge. I, I don't like to call it a contest. I have a student challenge uh, like once every other month about or once per quarter on average, something like that. But I theme them either around certain concept artists or something that's going on, like, you know, winter or Halloween or something. Okay. Now I want to pull his smile up really big. Trying to concentrate on building my F800 creature box, but pl please stop doing neat stuff that distracts me. <laughs> Pug, how do you make freckles in ZBrush? Um, well, you would have to have your surface density high enough, so like subdivide, have it high enough, and then just paint them with poly paint is what you would do. Okay, now. Let's get Sculptress, Sculptress Pro back on. And I just want to kind of come around here. So, yeah, I got to be careful. Don't want to put in too much detail. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Yuri, you crack me up. <laughs> that's like, that's what Bob Ross does for me too. If I want to go to sleep, I'll just put Bob Ross on. <laughs> Give him a little bit of a cleft chin. I'm trying to build what he's going to look like underneath his all his hair and mustache and crazy eyebrows and things. Whoops. Uh, Jacob, what do you use to, for retopology? Do you use manually or automatically? Always manually for for uh, game characters. Always, um, and I use I don't do it in ZBrush. I typically do it in other software like Maya. It doesn't matter where you do it as long as you do it well. Uh, the software is just kind of a tool. Um, but I've used all sorts of retopology tools. Trying to sink this in a little bit more. Uh, Vin, ask your question one more time. Kind of messy in here. Um, you ask what? Why did I change my workflow and my eyelids? Um, it just it just depends on what I'm feeling at the time. You know, the art art is messy. Um, there's no I don't use the same technique over and over and over again. It's like, well, this guy is kind of older. He has some wrinkles going on. How am I going to, what's, what's the best way to achieve what I want to achieve? And I, I, I felt like it would be better to um, build, up, build up the eyelids rather than uh, cut them in or uh, block them in, if that's what you're talking about. Oh, that's weird. There's kind of a weird, it's making a, because I turned off Sculptress Pro because I'm using Inflate again, and it made a weird triangle hole right there. So I'm going to have to fix that going back into Sculptress Pro mode. Oh, you loved her. Yeah, that gizmo is great. Then can I can I repeat please about the monster challenge? Um, it ends on the thirty first by midnight, so it's like four you know four days three days from now. Um, so it's almost over, and then it's just um, it's just to uh, sculpt a, a a concept from Creature Box. The guys over at Creature Box. You should have received an email earlier this month about it. Maybe did it? Did you not get it? Did it go into your spam, your junk email, or something? 
I'm sorry for that about that. That sucks if you missed it. Sometimes I like to turn on my um, wireframe so I can see the density of this stuff. So I can kind of clear it out and then do it again. need to overlap this stuff so it doesn't look like it's like coming out of his eye. It's kind of weird. Get the crow's feet back a little bit. And um, move doesn't move doesn't affect Sculptress Pro. It just moves. Okay, spending all this time on these crow's feet. Okay, let's turn off Sculptors Pro for a minute and I just wanna edit this head because I made the, the, uh, the skull come in a little high, or a little low, sorry, right here. Looks weird. When I um, when I get his hair on there, it'll make a big difference, I think. Okay, let's get his ears worked out. Uh, Zenchu, this is that this is neither. This is Sculptress Pro. Uh, Paul. Um, yeah, it's just up to you what you want to use. My favorite's at the my favorite currently is probably Maya's quad draw for doing retopology. It's just really nice. I'm actually going to use um cloth. So this cloth brush I don't always use for cloth. Sometimes I just want a soft push like this to kind of just detail out things like the ear without a very detailed line. Um, I used to use Topo Gun to, to, I wouldn't use it as a topology program, I would use it as a map baking program because it would, it would bake some really nice maps. That's what we used on Disney Infinity. It, it worked really well for baking maps, but we didn't use it for topology, which is funny because it's called Topo Gun, you know. But a lot of people like to use it for their topology. They just haven't updated it in a long time. So it's a bit outdated. All right, those are those are <laughs> way more realistic ears than I usually do. <laughs> 
just a giant hobby scrub. Oh, I think it's start dropping. Um, yeah, Blender's fine too. Blender, look at look at uh, Retopo Retopo Flow plugin for Blender. I think it's a paid plugin, but it's not. It's not Maya. You know, it doesn't cost as much as Maya. That's for sure. Okay, let's. I I want to clean up these these eyelids just a little bit more. They're kind of warbly and give him some lower eye bags like I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna kind of cut him in like this. And then do a fill and just kind of try and puff him up. I love the fill brush because it's subtle. It's like a slow, a slow buildup. You can see it over here on this side. I'm actually watching this side while I sculpt over here. I can build it up. I can do the same thing with the cheek right here. And then get that muscle that comes off the nose goes into here do the opposite and cut in a little tear duct it's kind of looking weird probably took it too far and you have to be careful with eyelids because you can accidentally give them an expression that you might not want you can make him angry I like to build it up right on the corners of the mouth too, right here. Just kind of make it. And right here. Double wrinkles. <laughs> All right, and then on the forehead too is kind of fun to do. Um. Sometimes I'll cut them in with a detail brush and then sometimes I'll just, here let's do, let's do them separate it down here. Why are you using Topo Gun? I'm not. I'm not using, this is, you mean to do retopology? Um, I just prefer, so the retopology is one of the things in ZBrush that could be improved. I use, when I'm doing retopology, I typically use Maya or something like that. Like I said, I only use Topo Gun to like bake maps, but I don't even use that anymore. I use Marmoset tool bag to bake maps now. And all these things, they're just tools. It doesn't matter. Honestly, it just, it doesn't, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you do the stuff that you need. You just need to find software that can do what you need to do and do it. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's Blender. It doesn't matter. Um, the only thing that matters to me is is uh, ZBrush because it's the best. It's the best at sculpting. So if I want to sculpt something, I'll definitely use ZBrush. Is there a way to extrude a masked area in ZBrush? Yeah, for sure. Sumerian, it's just under, um, it's under subtool menu, right? It's called extract right here. So just mask something off and then hit extract. And then the you can change the thickness and stuff like that, but that's where you do it. Then it, when do I start a new one? Um, I don't know yet. I. I kind of base it around what is going on in in my life at the time to see if I can manage it or not. Um, I'm going to the New York City Toy Fair in February, so um, 
So maybe the 1st of March, we'll have to see if, if I uh, have time to start a new one then. I'd like to. And then I, I have to decide what it's going to be about and who, what kind of concept artists I can get, you know, that kind of stuff. If it's going to be based on a concept artist or not, or what. Okay, I really think the hair is going is going to be the thing that makes this guy, right? <sighs> oh, thanks Saturday. When you start new, let's see, is there Did I answer your question? I'm still rushing to get the current student challenge done. <laughs> good luck, man. There's some really really good ones going on right now. I want to make his head more square. As I go, and then let's fix this neck is bugging me. It needs to have more kind of skinnier back here, but more up here. Something like not really fat rolls, but. Something that kind of blends it together more. There we go. Hey, what's up, Ash? How's it going? Welcome, welcome. I'm trying. I'm trying my hand at uh, Einstein. <laughs> uh, like the idiot modeling the genius. <laughs> Something like that, right? Uh, it's a little more realistic than I'm used to. I'm trying, so... Give him a bigger nose, I think. And I'm doing uh, more... Sculptress Pro than I normally do, which is kind of fun. We're gonna do some fiber mesh on this guy. Get him, get him a mustache, some crazy eyebrows. Whoa. Heavier brow. <laughs> What's fiber mesh? Uh, it's a way to make hair inside of ZBrush. I'll show you here in a minute. It's just a, I hardly ever do it because I work in games and you can't really use it in games, but this guy is gonna be an illustration, so I'm gonna use it for this one. It's gonna be a render only. Ron, tell us again why you have a ghosted keyboard so you can see which keys I'm pressing when. It's a learning tool. I'm gonna push his lower lip in too. There we go, and then blend it out. What have you been up to, Ash? So Ashley's another streamer on here. Have you been, you still been making, you still make monsters? from your brain on on your stream, during your stream, and do like stylized characters on your personal one still. She has both, she's a double threat. You play Diablo? Oh man, we should play. I, <laughs> I play hardcore, I play hardcore seasonal and uh, I just, I, I was I was an idiot because I was getting too too cocky and I was uh, thinking I was I was okay and I died to poison uh, level sixty one trying to do the seasonal stuff like oh man 
Dummy. Getting too anxious. I was playing playing with a friend that was higher level than me. And I forgot how much the uh, how much the difficulty plays into that, you know? The difficulty level if you have if you're playing with somebody higher than you. Killed me. Oh nice. I don't play the leaderboards. I don't have to talk to you about that. That sounds fun. I usually have issues with adding subtools like insert shapes with symmetry turned on. Uh, I, I usually show that every, every stream Saturday. If you want to, if you want to watch my live streams back, what you can do is go to, just do a Google search for ZBrush Live. I'm going to pull this down here. So, so, uh, Pixelogic forward or Pixelogic.com forward slash ZBrush Live. Then if you go to schedule or presenters actually up here, click on presenters. And you can see all of us right here. See, there's Ashley right here, and there's me. And if you click on uh, past broadcast and schedule, Ashley, I always go through this when you show up. <laughs> and you can see all the past streams that I've done. So these are a bunch of characters that I've done during past streams, and I always show. So this guy would be a good one. So maybe episode 65. Watch, watch me use that. Do it, do it in that stream right there. Um, that would be a good, good one for you. <laughs> uh, I'm I play a I play a necro with uh, with the bone shard that the corpse shards whatever they're called that build that's a fun one okay so let's do let's see what are we at one hour um, yeah this will be fun I'm gonna start do, doing some fiber mesh it'll be Let's duplicate this out, save it off. And uh, let's get into doing some some funky hair. Should we do the, let's do the mustache first? So how fiber mesh works is it works based on, um, it works based on me uh, masking. So just do a Google search for ZBrush Live and it'll come up. So it's pixelogic.com forward slash live or something like that. Yeah, just Google ZBrush Live. You'll find it. Little Hitler mustache here. And the fiber mesh will grow wherever the mask is. Bring it a little bit down into here. You found it awesome. Hey, Bode, I usually don't do that. Um, there, just because it's it's kind of hard to uh, do portfolio reviews during my live stream. So, but you can you can send it to me. Sometimes I'll look at them. Uh, if you send it to me at shane.olson at three D character workshop com, I can take a peek. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like a chia pet. You pl you plant the seeds and you you water them and then they grow. <laughs> okay. So now that you, when you when you get a mask in place like this, what you can do is you just come over to fiber mesh. Fiber mesh right there then you can or you can open up a uh, light box and go to there's fibers right here if there's one in particular that looks kind of like you know something you want to use maybe this one right here 
Uh, you can start with one of these pre-made fiber meshes, uh, but I typically just hit preview like this. And it, <laughs> it always reminds me of one of those, uh, you know, have you ever seen those magnets? Like it shows a guy's face and there's all that uh, like me metallic ore stuff and you move it around with a magnet to make him have different hairs. That's what this reminds me of every single time. So, <laughs> you die a lot above 65. Well, I, yeah, I play hardcore. So, I, if you die, you're dead <laughs> on uh, playing hardcore Diablo. Okay, so now what I want to do is um, just kind of start, start messing with this and making it look more like a mustache. So, you crack open modifiers right here. And there's two different things that, that will um, adjust coverage, like how many hairs there are. And then there, that's coverage right here. You can turn that down. There's max fibers, and you can turn that down a little bit. And then you can adjust the length. So crank up the length. I want to change the color. So I want to make the tip kind of a gray or white, like this. And the base, maybe like a dark gray. And then you can mess with gravity, make it go either stick out all over the place straight or kind of make it hang down. And you can adjust with the gravity profile. The H tangent, these are like, um, yeah, it just messes with the, the direction, changing the normal value of it. So like just the direction it's coming off of the surface. And I don't want... I'm not going to mess with twist or any of that kind of stuff. And most of this is just experimentation. You know, it's just getting in there and like messing with the with the things. Um, let's see. You guys are rolling with the questions today. I'm trying. It's kind of hard to keep up. <laughs> 190 people watching today. Super cool. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Um, you draw clothes. What's the best way to put out the corners to change the orientation of the corner? Yeah, I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Put yeah, it's, it's just I move it by hand. I keep my clothing uh, single sided for as long as I can, and then I give it thickness at the very end, and then I use creasing to keep the corners. If that's kind of what you're asking. Um, hey Juan, it's going well. Thanks. Is there a way to ZBrush calculate what poly faces are hidden and delete them, and then weld the edge of what's visible to the arm to the clothing? Uh, yes, but that's, that's like a really, that's an in-depth demo. So, um, I, I can't stop what I'm doing right here to, oh, where'd it go? Uh, to, to stop and show you how to do that, but it's possible. Is this a concept of my own? Yes, somewhat. Um, oh, you're from Spain. You want to say thank you? You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, ancient V, um, let's see. Sorry, the questions are going by so fast, I'm missing them. Okay, is there a way? Yeah, that ancient, like I said, that's, uh, you're doing a stylist character for a college project. The first question would be, what is the most efficient way to hide or delete the faces behind clothing on the character? Keep them in separate sub tools and then delete them. That's the best way. For it to reduce the poly count of the character, for example. Um, and then even the be a better way beyond that is to manually retopologize in another program. So typically I'll build out the body, then I'll build out the clothing on top, and then I will retopologize in a different program. You don't use the high resolution model for your final model that you're going to use to bring into a game, a television show, or a film, or anything like that. You You want to rebuild the character after you've built it. I know it sounds like a pain in the butt, and it is, but that's kind of how it works. You don't want to use your high resolution character to go right into a game or a film. Like this guy, I would have to rebuild him so he would be set up for animation. And that's, and how I would do that as I was, I would take him into another program, retopologize him and bring him back and then uh, transfer the details. So it's, yeah, it's pretty, uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty long process. 
And I do, I go over that entire process in my, in my course. I teach an online course. It's over at 3D Character Workshop. And I walk you through every, every single bit of that from A to Z. So if you want to learn how to do that, it's in my, it's in my course. Not to, not to you know, try and sell my course every time, but it's in there. Okay, so I'm going to mess. I don't want clumps. Um, let's see, da, 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 da. I want to thicken these up, scale the root and the tip a little bit just to make them thicker. And this doesn't really give a proper re representation of what it's supposed to be looking like. So you have to render it out to see. And you just hit BPR and you can kind of see it better. That's, that's more like what it's going to look like when it's, when it's rendered. I want to get the corners longer. Uh, no, you're not alone, Chicken Hawk. I, I love it's it's very therapeutic for sure. <laughs> Let me see what that does. It's just not giving me what I want. Okay, and then once once you're um when you get done. Then you can you can comb it. It's it's pretty funny to do, but you can kind of comb the hair and make it what you want it to be. Let's see. I'm gonna. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna see what I can do with this. Um, when you when you're kind of close to where you want it, you can just hit accept, and what it does is, um, yeah, sure. What it does is it puts it in a, in a new sub tool like this, and now you click on it, and now you can use the different fiber brushes, like all these groom brushes. Um, yeah, I'm going to use this groom lengthen because I want to lengthen these ones along the the outer edge. Whoops! Let me turn on symmetry here, and then kind of bend it and bend it down down here. And some of the brushes will work on, on these that are not like hair brushes, like smooth, for example. You just got to be careful that because it, it'll smooth very quickly. See that? It smooths down fast. So you need to be careful with that. How would you go about doing a face on a character like this? Oh, on a character like... Um, I ju you just ta you just tackle it like you would do any face. I, it's, it's hard to explain, you know, you just have to... You just model it. <laughs> I know that sounds like such an ass answer, I'm sorry, but... Yeah, I just kinda... It's, you gotta look past you got to get past what you know and model what you see. You know, that's that's my that's what that's like my uh my saying of the year in 2019 is model what you see not what you know. Okay. See, I don't even know why I made his mouth, but hey, he's got a mouth. But I would I would literally just uh, I would I would start by blocking that face out and using the proportions that you see in that concept and just trying to trying to work it out and stay stay subtle, stay clean, you know, all that kind of stuff. All right, A cubed. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes too. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. Uh, yes, it does leave the mask on the other sub tool. You, ha you have to clear that. Um, how do you apply poly paint on the fibers? You can just color them. So this is a hard paintbrush right here. You can just color them like you would color anything else. See that? You just color it. Um, 
So I don't I don't want here. Let me see. We'll get his. Uh, let's get his skin color here. Might as well start coloring him up. I'm kind of darker. Something like that. Then we can grab his mustache and fill it with kind of a gray, maybe a mid gray, like this. Fill it. And then what you can do is just kind of go with a lighter gray and just kind of, even with the airbrush, this the softer brush up here, and just kind of start working it in, see how it just, it just paints it, just like it, you would anything else. Kind of lighten it up. Yeah, when you're making it, Paul, when you're making the, the fibers, but after you've committed, that all that all those options go away. <laughs> yeah, it's totally a scruffy janitor. Right. So and again you can turn on, you know, render it out to kind of see what it's really looking like. So this is what his mustache is looking like as rendered in ZBrush. Now when you push it over to something like Keyshot, Keyshot will render fibers like this, which is nice, but it'll look a little bit different and actually a little better. So that's just kind of something you want to pay attention to. Um, like this isn't your final result. This is just a representation of what the mustache is doing. Yeah, to paint just a standard brush with poly paint. So before, before you commit, you can just pick your tip color and your base color and, and have it do, you know, you can edit it that way. Uh, Defrawi, uh, no, it doesn't depend on the concept. It, it depends on your final destination of where you want your model to go. So, for example, this is not going to be a game character, so I can use fiber mesh. This is only going to be a render, so I can use fiber mesh. If it was going to be a 3D print, then I would not use fiber mesh because this stuff won't print. It's too thin, and I can't translate this to a game. So, if usually for a game character, I'll either do solid, chunky hair or hair cards. Those are the two things that you can push into a game engine. So you can't you can't really use fiber mesh for a game. Are there UVs? I don't think so. I've never, you know, this is something you don't use. You don't bring this into, you know, you can use the curves inside of Maya if you're gonna use like some, some kind of a, like shave and a haircut or whatever for hair inside of Maya. You can use the curves, but uh, I typically don't. This is just for an illustration, so I don't care about UVs. I don't care about any of that stuff. I'm just kind of putting it into place. A hair card? Um, just I would just say Google hair card for games. Uh, you know, just I'll show you. Hair cards. Um, and it just... Let's see, we'll probably find some crappy images, but this is th these are hair cards right here. So it's just essentially ribbons laid out and then textured for a game model like this. These are all hair cards. Like if you're wanting to get semi-realistic looking hair inside of a game and then you use uh, isotropic materials to put on there. So anyway, these are hair cards. So you don't use fiber mesh, you use hair cards. Okay. I'm running out of time. I gotta get this, gotta get this guy. Great questions though, guys. Thanks for keep them coming. But I, I might, I might miss it. Okay, so let's get let's get eyebrows on him. Just a little subtle. They're not they're not crazy Gandalf eyes, eyebrows. They're just they're kind of subtle. Uh, last question for you is I have the head of my character on a separate tool during modeling but I had to merge to my body so I could do the neck part without having cutting connecting edge midway after it's merged I no longer can dynamesh because it will balance the amount of polys of the body 
lose the detail on the face. So after it's merged, I want to Dynamesh just the face part. Um, okay, so I just barely talked to my students about this. And what I usually do is I have my head separate from my body when I make my characters. Uh, nine times out of ten, it's separate. Unless it's a, it's a super simple cartoon character like a bear that is not wearing any clothes. So you can't separate the head from the body or you'd, you'd see the line separating in between. But usually if, if you have a character and it has clothes and there's a natural separation line where you can separate the head from the body, then that's what I do. And I hide that separation underneath the clothing. And that, because, um, because subtools, uh, they have a maximum, kind of a maximum cap as far as density goes whether you're using Dynamesh or uh, subdivision surfaces or any of that kind of stuff, there's kind of a soft cap of around, in my opinion, it's around 5 million-ish. So if you're trying to get that, if you're trying to subdivide a body with a head and, and you only have 5 million polys, I know that sounds like a ton, but when you're sculpting, 5 million is not that much, especially when you're getting into high resolution detail and stuff like that. So I would, I would separate the head from the body then you have uh, 5 million that you can subdivide your head to and 5 million you can subdivide your body to. So you'll get more resolution. You'll get 10 million split between the two. So that's, that's my recommendation is try and split it if you can. In your case, you can see the separation. Well, can you move it down? You said, you're, do you have clothes on the guy or the, the character? Does he have clothes on? Because you can se you can separate it all the way down as as far as that character has, you know, just just try and figure out a way to hide a separation line in there somewhere. Otherwise, yeah, you you're just kind of you just kind of have to deal with it and try to figure out the density, I guess. So yeah, you can do a cut line clear down here, clear clear low. You don't have to cut it at the neck. You just cut it down here, but you don't have to have your entire body with the with the legs and the arms and everything all in one mesh. Just just separate it out. If that makes sense. Okay, let's see. Sorry, I got to get going on this. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so when you preview it again, it's going to use the settings that it had on the last one. And I don't want these eyebrows to be nearly as long. So I'm just gonna crank the length down. And I want the uh, max, or the coverage to be lower and the max fibers to be fewer. And then uh, I want it to be a little more random as far as the length goes. So length variations is right here. I can crank that up maybe crank the length down even more something like that <laughs> I don't know if Einstein ever wore any hats this is supposed to be Einstein so I'm trying to keep true to his to who he was No revolve rate. Uh, okay, let's let's try that. So we'll hit accept. Let's do a quick render. Yeah, no worries. I hope it helps. I know. Sorry, I'm. I'm trying to work through the the answer really quick. It's a it's a really big answer for a for a, a live stream like this, you know. I think you can watch. Uh, I did a pirate girl during the live streams here on Pixel Logic. If you watch that back, um, you can check that out. Also, again, in my in my online course, I cover that exact thing. I um, let me see. I'll show you really fast. So this is a character that I that I show you how to build in the course. And her head and her 
right here. This is this is all combined, but it's it's by itself. See that? This is this is all just part of one subtool. It's not her entire body. So it has nothing to do with her wrists or anything. So that way I can get pretty high resolution without um you know, having to subdivide it up to 10 million. Okay. So what do you say? Oh, can't, can't you put them together without Dynamesh, just making one object. And then after you duplicate this new object, and Dynamesh it, use project with subdivs to get your resolution back. Yeah, you could do that. You could actually make two objects and then subdivide both objects, make two objects out of one, and then you can Z-remesh them and then subdivide them and then project the original detail back onto those two, uh, two, two subtools, I guess. Oh, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Spider. So what is your name? Spridley? <laughs> Thanks. Um, Jack, you, where do you find the hard paint brushes? I made them. So you can go get them on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I give them away. It's just, um, if you go to the top, there's a little bar that says grab my brushes. That's where they are for now. That's where they're at. Um, but yeah, I made, I made these two brushes, a hard paint and a soft paint. Yeah, it's supposed to be Einstein. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to get there. Okay, so let's uh okay. I'm just gonna use you can also just use the move brush to move the hairs around too on these. Sometimes it's a little more difficult and they don't move, but there you go. If you want to make them longer. I don't want them that long. <laughs> Okay, let's see what kind of uh, brushes we have. I don't, yeah, this, I think Groom Lengthen is my favorite. But sometimes it's hard to grab the hairs. I just wanna grab some individually just to kind of make make it more random. Maybe smooth this whole thing down. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Glad I didn't destroy it. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Now, now we get to do the crazy hair. This is going to be the fun part. So it might take a little bit to to get in here, but. Um, which, are you talking about these brushes? Yeah, these brush icons, these, I made these. So, yeah, these are my own brush icons. The, and you can, get, you can get these brushes over, like I said, over on 3dcharacterworkshop.com if you want. You just sign up for my newsletter. I, I gonna be, I'm going to be sending out a newsletter more often, like once a week or something with some, some videos with some new tips and tricks. Be kind of fun. I might have to do, well, we'll see. I was going to say I might have to do the sideburns separately. Sometimes when you want different settings on the hair, like for the sideburns, for example, um, or maybe that, like this little widow's peak here, um, I might, you might want to do it in separate fiber mesh bits or subtools, whatever you want to say. Okay. So let's try that. I want to save this first.
Einstein. Yes. Okay. All right, Spridley. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, okay, here we go. Fiber mesh preview. <laughs> so these are the eyebrow settings. Looks like he's uh, he's cut his hair and it's just growing out again. So this will be fun. Let's let's get the length going like crazy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And I want some more uh, segments. See how the segments there's not enough. So I want to put in like not ten, more like. Four, five, maybe. Yeah, maybe six. And then we'll. I want to turn the gravity down a little bit because I really wanted to stick out hilariously. Maybe ten. Ten's good. That's great. Love it. Okay. Um, Life lover, I'm sure you get asked a lot, but what is your advice to get industry experience, especially being a junior? Um, you need to be able to copy a concept almost a hundred percent and have it be appealing, um, and then show that in your portfolio. That's the biggest thing because, um, 90% of the time you're going to be modeling someone else's concept. I'm not doing that right now. I'm coming up with my own, but during my career, um, I've been, I've always modeled from somebody else's concept. Almost always. Almost always. Unless I'm doing like this, a, a celebrity or a caricature or something like that. Okay, that's too much. I actually like it being kind of squirrely thin. I want to, let, let's see if I render this out. Okay, it's not bad. It's kind of fun. Um... I want to make the, I want to scale the tip. I do want to scale the root. Maybe not that much. Okay. <laughs> Is it possible to export fiber mesh to different software? Uh, you can, you can export it to Keyshot. Keyshot will render fiber mesh. You can export the curves to say Maya or something like that to be able to, uh, but you have to transfer, trans translate those curves to be used with another plugin. So another hair plugin that works with like Maya or something like that. Um, so thanks Vinit. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of why I saved it till the end because the hair kind of makes it. Um, but I, I'm, I'm hardly getting any hairs down in here. So maybe I need to do coverage a little more. That's looking like grass. 0.6 maybe. Um, okay, coverage. Yeah, it's just a matter of experimenting with it too. I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna mess with the uh, gravity just a little bit. Cause I want it to curve down somewhat. Okay. And he's only gonna be seen from the front. So if I was to do this from the side, I wouldn't have it look like this. It would be a little different than that, but I like the way he looks from the front, so. Um, okay, let me t let me dial down this these max fibers just a little bit. Um, okay, then length profile, length variations. No, I lo I want it yeah up there surface coverage variations. I don't want it to revolve or twist. Direction might be kind of fun. No, <laughs> that's not what I want. Whoa, I guess I want a little, not that little, 
0 0.02. I guess that's where it was at. If it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> okay, so the base is this gray and the tip is... So this is where um, we were talking about how to adjust the coloring of it. So the tip is white and the base is gray and then it does a, a gradient up the length of it. Number of sides per fiber profile. So we can actually add thickness. And that, yeah, that'll create that'll create uh, multiple sides to each hair. I don't know what this is gonna look like. Hey, what's up, Dan? Okay, that's kind of fun. All right, let's let's accept that. Um, you know, I'm gonna say no to that. Turn on symmetry, and we're gonna use that length and brush again. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so I just want to kind of just groom these a little bit, so we, so it's a little more crazy. It's crazy, but it's not. Uh, I'm just trying to get it a little more even, I guess. pretty funny. I, I love it when, oh, thanks Mike. I love it when, uh, when a character starts to make me laugh. That's when I know it's kind of working, you know? <laughs> so this, this guy is starting to make me laugh. Let's see. It's hard to tell what's going on. And see, it's just covering up these ears. I don't really care though, because I love the hair. The hair is just crazy. I think I do want to pull these eyebrows out more. Just to add to the craziness of his, of his hair. And this, the mustache is a little, now it's, it's feeling a little too dense. Let me render it and make sure because I can do the mustache again. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the mustache again using using the hair settings now instead of the the mustache mush mustache settings. <laughs> so, because every time you do fiber mesh, it remembers the last setting you had and you can save that setting if you want to save it for later. So, I I like what the hair is looking like much better than what the mustache is looking like. So, I'm going to hide I'm going to hide the mustache, go back to the fit. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Einstein without a mustache. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's uh let's give him this mustache again. Just paint in the the mask again. Okay. Yeah, fiber mesh is fun because it looks like a film character, right? I never get to really play with fiber mesh when I'm I'm doing it for games because it doesn't work for games or 3D printed stuff. So fiber mesh is just fun though. All right. Cross our fingers. Uh okay. Yeah, that's looking better already. It's just a little too long. So let's just crank the length down. Stop it. And maybe crank up the gravity a little bit so it hangs down more. Uh, let's do coverage. No, I took it down too far. I think max fibers is what I need to take down. Because I want it wispy like the rest of his head, you know? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make it longer and then I'll push it back with the brush. 
because I like what it looks like when it's longer, but it, it doesn't need to be that long. Okay, let's hit let's hit accept here. And then we'll we'll just edit that. Okay. I th move move will work and so will snake hook. Um but it just doesn't work like you think it would. So you just got to be careful. <laughs> I like how now he can see his lips underneath. Okay, let's let's grab the length brush. Um, there's just a groom, groom strong. Just a groom brush. There we go. Okay, let's see if I can just grab it and pull it back because they're now they're a little too long. I can also use uh, smooth, and smooth will shorten it as well. You just gotta be again. You just gotta be really careful because it'll it'll shrink up really quick. And groom, those groom brushes will cause warbles like nobody's business. It'll just, I mean, yeah, it'll just go crazy. So you need to be careful. That's why sometimes the move brushes do a better job than the groom brushes. They just give you a little more control. <laughs> Steve Buscemi. When using a mouse to sculpt, can I get the same results? Uh, I recommend a, a tablet if you can. Yeah, that's true, removing. Yeah, it becomes Doc Brown, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Let's see what it looks like rendered out. Man, now they're too thin. It's too thin. Gosh dang it. All right, we'll try one more time. We have time. Let's do it again. Um, that's why sometimes you don't want to clear your mask right away, but let's delete this too thin. Let's do it again. Sometimes you got to do it. Okay. That length, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. length, reduce it and then Max fibers, let's increase that. Not that much. Let's do four. Okay. And then I think length variations, we can turn that down to. Maybe that's what's messing us up. Let's see if it'll render it in preview mode so I can kind of see, get a better idea what it's doing. Gosh, see, I want this wispy hair, but on his mustache, and it's just not giving me what I want. Not doing it. Max fibers. Even though I use the same setting, because it's a smaller area that it's covering, so it's like packing all the same coverage into that smaller area. Let's go to like three, four, back to four. Four is the magic number on max fibers, I think. Uh, Turn the gravity the opposite direction. It's like, boop, <laughs> up in his face. That's pretty good. No, let's roll it back. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. What's up, Chris? All right.
right, let's see. <clears throat> let's render this out. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stick with that. That's not bad, that's not bad. Um, I think we're still seeing the, uh, let's activate fast preview, sure. Okay. Fast preview gives you a different view in this mode. Looks like a little denser even though it's not. All right, let's give him some eyes and I'm gonna warm him up as far as some uh, paint goes. Let's grab the color off his face. You can see what color I have kind of with the eyes. The eyes will change color as I select colors. But what I typically do is I bring it into warm tones and just kind of warm up his nose and his cheeks and his ears. And then I'll grab some blue or purplish blue rather and then just kind of just very subtly put some down in his chin and down his neck a little bit and don't worry if you get too heavy with this you can always come back with the skin color and go back over it and lighten it back up towards the skin tones it's kind of like pushing it back and pulling it back out then I, I like to do shadows like in the eye in the eye pockets so we'll just I get like just a darker color of that skin tone and just kind of darken his eye sockets just to recess them back a little bit then we'll grab his eyes and we'll fill them with a not not white so it's like an off-white like uh, like down in here let's make sure we select them there we go and grab the hard paint brush and fill them. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> yeah, that the, the the Einstein tongue out. I thought about that, like that. <laughs> okay. Um, and then what what I do sometimes is I'll bring in some red on the sides of the eyes just to kind of make them feel warmer and alive. It's hard to tell, but you can see just a little bit of red in there. And then towards the uh, center right here. Looks like it went a little too much. Bring it back, there we go. Then um, we, can just, we can just put, uh, let me see if I'm gonna, maybe I'll paint it. That's weird. Made this orange for some reason. Okay, so I'm gonna apply, apply this dynamic subdivisions and divide it up to about a million so I can paint on it. So it's 3.14 million now. Just so I can paint uh, an iris on the, on the eyeball. So uh, lately I've been actually bringing in geometry for the iris, but on this guy, since I'm kind of running out of time, I got five minutes, I'm just gonna paint the iris on there. So let's get a darkish brown. We're gonna test some. Some eyes. Some different sizes. <laughs> it's so fun to like <laughs> to do different different locations for the eyes. It changes them so much, you know. Um, but typically you'll want to have the iris just barely hidden underneath that upper eyelid. Something like this. Um, <laughs> thanks, Neil. <laughs> um, and then we can go like a, a lighter brown. Let me see. Once I do that, once I get the iris into place, I like to mask it. So you can go mask by intensity. Mask by intensity right here. And then invert that mask. So then I won't paint I won't accidentally paint on the white part of the eye. And then we can sharpen this mask up. And what that does for us is, let's hide everything else, is that puts a mask around this iris. And we can come in here and just go lighter. And just paint kind of where the, the light would catch down here. 
You can go over to where the pupil would be. You can even go just a little bit more orange just to make a highlight in there where it's catching the light. This is totally faked. Something like that. Then I'm going to grab this brown color again and go a little darker with it. Grab the hard paint brush and put the pupil in there. See how big we want it. There we go. Then what we can do is just fill these eyes with, I like to fill them with the toy, the toy material. So, uh, or the uh, uh, zebra eye material. There's two of them that I like to use. So click on material and then so we have, I have a bunch of different zebra eye reflections, but there's this one and it, it'll fill everything at first, but as long as you have your eye selected and your hard paintbrush selected, switch this to M up here, cause that stands for material and then fill it. So fill, and that just filled the eyeball only with material, even though it looks like it's filled everywhere else. Then when I switch back to skin shade four, it's only gonna fill the eyeballs with that material. So now it gives his eyes a nice reflection and it just kind of makes him look more realistic. Now that I have that, I'm going to go and just adjust this, uh, how far this is cutting into his face is bugging me. So I'm going to pull this up, give him a little better, kind of more of a smiley eyed squinty look. Oh, you do? Awesome. <laughs> That's cool, Neil. All right. And then it's kind of going too far back, which is rare for me. I, I usually don't pull the eye back far enough on the side of the head. <laughs> the original Don King. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, so now um, let's render him out I need to turn the shadows down the shadows are way too dark way too dark um, let's clear this mask I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly push him over to, Z to uh, key shot really quick just to see what we can do with him let's save this All right, and then let's get him over a key shot. So under render, 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 external render key shot. When I split unmasked points to get a gap between poly groups, is there a reason? You get a gap between poly groups? Um, I don't know what you mean. Maybe show, uh, maybe send it to me, Tenshi. Uh, send me an email, if you could, please. <laughs> oh, man. Now it's like, it's so crazy how the different hairs will look inside of Keyshot. Like this, now the hairs on his head are a little too thin. And then the, the eyebrows are too thick and the mustache is a bit too thick. So you can see how you could spend all day messing around with fiber mesh and getting it to work. <laughs> Let me see here. Um, I'm just going to drag this. Let's see. Drag this here. Actually, I like what's happening with the eyeballs. Hmm. Oh, there's a bunch of the fiber meshes and stuff too. You can act, there's some materials that you can put on to the hairs inside of Keyshot to make it work. Um, let's see. I'm going to crank my field of view and my focal length down. Because I want to flatten them out a little bit and turn off the ground. Anyway, 
Um, we can put him in different environments, which might be kind of fun. Put him in an office. <laughs> and then you can roll the environment around. This might this might uh, mess with my my live stream, so I, I hope it doesn't. Let's put him in this environment. Yeah, sometimes these environments don't really work because it's not bright enough. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably why you hate fiber mesh, Chris. Really, it's like it's like I call it herding cats. It's like herding cats. You can never. It's so hard to get something that you want out of it. You know. I mean, look at these eyebrows. They're so different. Anyway, it's almost like you have to do it all at the same time to get them consistent. <laughs> anyway, we can go back to uh, we can go back to ZBrush. I I can turn the. <coughs> excuse me. I'll just close this. Close ZBrush for a minute, or a key shot down. Takes up too much of my CPU. Close it. I don't know, oh, do you wanna save changes? Discard. Sorry, one second, see ya. All right, anyway, that's kinda of just fun to mess with. If I had more time on the stream, I'd, I'd play with it until it started looking good, you know, uh, mess with these fibers some more. Uh, change the density and stuff and 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 then just kind of uh, make whoa <laughs> I was trying to grab the mustache not the mouth there you go <laughs> oh my gosh all right <laughs> I'm gonna pose I'm gonna pose him out too give him a huge mustache <laughs> get him in perspective all right, guys. I think that'll be it for today. <laughs> yep, cousin it for sure. <laughs> oh man, end up getting no promising results. It's so hard, and it's it's really difficult to. Uh, um, yeah, I I believe you, Paul. <laughs> I believe you. I need to play. I need to play with it some more. But the hair in here is really fun to play with. But it's kind of it's difficult to to groom and stuff like that. But it's it's a lot of fun still. And uh, some people have gotten way good at it, while others like myself are not. I don't use it enough to be good at it. Excuse me. Oh, my goodness. So, anyway, guys, hey, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, we, we made this fun Einstein guy. I always like using fiber mesh. I used it in the past. Um, we also used uh, Sculptress Pro mode a lot, which was kind of fun. Um, I don't use that very often either. So, anyway... Um, I need to I need to pull in his widow's peak even more. Anyway, yeah, it was kind of fun. I, I like I said, I was just doing this for a personal thing, so a lot of fun. <laughs> yep, hair is a monster. Hair is the real monster. <laughs> anyway, uh, as always, uh, I I teach stuff. I teach an online class called Three D Character Workshop. If you would like to uh, join me, the enrollment's closed right now, but I'm going to be opening it soon. And if you would like to sign up for my uh, newsletter, you can go grab my free brushes and you'll be entered into that newsletter and you will be notified when the course becomes available again. So, uh, which will hopefully be very, very soon. Like I said, we have, I've, I've just been starting a student only live stream. So I live stream just like this but I go way deeper. I talk about anatomy, I talk about you know, a whole bunch of other things that I can't really talk about during the Pixelogic stream, which is, um, it's a lot of fun for the students because they can ask questions um, and get, get deeper. So, uh, and then I do a and A on Fridays, which, which has been really nice, where you can ask the, the hard questions. So anyway, um, I would love to see more of you in there. It's been a lot of fun and we're ending our character uh, well, our student, um, our student challenge is ending next week, and I'm excited about that because it's going to be a creature workshop challenge, and the students are just kicking butt with that, so it's going to be awesome. <laughs> anyway, guys, yep, see you same time next week, next Monday, and uh, we'll do it again. <laughs> 
All right. Take care, guys. Have a great week. Cheers.